All right. Uh, thank you for joining our Bible study for tonight. Praise be to our Lord God for gathering us safely to this place. And we welcome those who are joining us through Zoom and Facebook Live. Thank you for attending yet another episode of the Bible History Project. Before we go ahead and proceed, we ask everyone to please stand for our opening prayer. Everlasting Father, thank you so much for your blessings. Indeed, you are good and kind to us all. Not only did you create us, you also called us to belong to you, your sheep in these last days, called your sons and daughters, because when you fully give us our rights, your, the rights you have given us by grace, mercy, love, and compassion, we will become like your beloved son to dwell in your holy abode always with you. Father, please accept our praise and our thanks as we study your holy words. May you please send forth your Holy Spirit to guide us in our thinking, to guide our hearts, that we may receive blessing from you through your holy teachings. Our Lord Jesus, we also call upon you today. Increase our faith. Yes. And please help us to understand the will of our Father yes. that we will become more and more like you yes. in what we do with our life. Amen. We believe, Father, you have listened to our prayers. Yes. We ask and beg all things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, again, thank you so much for attending our Bible study for today. Last week, we talked about the sacred name of the Father, which we uncovered using the Hebrew text of Scripture, which is the original text, by the way. And we uncovered the sacred name or the set-apart name that belongs to God, our Father, who created all things. And so today, we're going to talk, we're going to talk about the work of proclaiming the set-apart or sacred name of our Father. Why is this significant for us to do? Why do we have this Bible study in the first place? Why do we have this series concerning the set-apart name of our Lord God? Let's begin here in Romans chapter 9 verse 17, for the scripture says to Pharaoh, for this very purpose I raised you up to demonstrate my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed throughout the whole earth. And so it's the will of God ever since the very beginning up until today for his name to be proclaimed. But for it to be proclaimed, we need to first know how to pronounce the name. Because how can it be proclaimed if we don't know how to pronounce it? Why do we believe God wants us to know how to pronounce it and to know his name? That's because, next slide, and the slide after that, because I already asked the question, it has been written 6,823 times. So before the exile, the people of God, they always called upon the sacred or set-apart name of God himself. And of course, they did it with an expression of reverence. We must never take the name of our God in vain. And so when we have the... Uh, name of God, we need to understand how to pronounce it correctly. Well, what is that name? How does it look like in the ancient script? Next slide, please. In ancient Hebrew, the Paleo-Hebrew, that's how it looks like. Modern Hebrew, I'm sure if you are to go online, if you are to search Bible scripts, you're going to find the modern Hebrew of the name of God. How many of you are familiar with that name, with that script right there, modern Hebrew? Yeah, you've seen that before, right? And, and in Latin, of course, it's Y-H-U-H. -H. Now, how, next slide, how is the set-apart name of God pronounced? There are people who pronounce it Jehovah. How many, how many know someone who pronounces the name of the Father as Jehovah? Yeah, we have the Jehovah's Witnesses. There's a, a variant of that, Yehovah, right? And there's also Yahweh. How many here have come across the name Yahweh? Probably some of us, as a matter of fact, if you go to some translations, English translations of the Bible today, instead of the word L-O-R-D, you're going to come across Yahweh. Most people, most scholars use Yahweh. Some use Jehovah. And so how is it properly pronounced? Is it Jehovah? 
Is it Yahweh or is it something else? We need to know because how can we proclaim the name of God if we don't know how to pronounce the sacred or set apart name of our all mighty God. Next slide. And so before we go ahead and proceed, letter by letter, how to pronounce the set apart name of God, we need to understand how Hebrew works. When we read Hebrew, we read from right to left. In Latin and English, it's from left to right. This is why I put the arrows there. Next slide, please. So we're going to look at the letters from right to left and then, look, and then compose our pronunciation or our transliteration of the sacred or set apart name of our Father. Okay, so let's begin with the first letter, which is the Yad. We got it circled there. Looks like a Z, doesn't it? Right? It's called a Yad. A Yad. Some people call it Yod or Yud. Doesn't really matter for me. It is a Yad. And I'll explain why it's a Yad later on. That's the first uh, letter. So how is it pronounced? Well, how do we come up with the pronunciation of that letter? Well, we use the ancient Hebrew alphabet. It's a good thing there's a chart provided. Next slide. We have a chart. And in that chart, it has the black box, the, green, uh, the orange box, the green box, and the blue box corresponding to different languages. The brown box is the ancient Hebrew. Orange, modern Hebrew. Greek is the green box, right? And the Latin is the blue box from which the English language came from. Remember, we're looking at how to pronounce Yad. Notice in Hebrew, in Greek, in Latin even, there is no word for J. There's no letter for J. As a matter of fact, if you can see the circled word J, it goes under Latin, but not Greek, not modern Hebrew, not ancient Hebrew, but Latin. But it did not appear in Latin immediately. In ancient Latin, there was no J whatsoever. Well, when did the word or the letter J come about? When was it introduced into the Latin language? Next slide, please. What year was the letter J created? Back in 1524. When did God come up with his name? Way, way, way before that. So I'm pretty sure the, the name of God doesn't have the letter J. Do you agree? This is why we can cross out Jehovah. There's just no way his name would be Jehovah because the letter J was not constructed or introduced into the Latin language until 1524. And to this day, it's not even found in the Hebrew and the Greek languages and so impossible for the personal name of God to be to start with the letter J. This is why I don't believe it is Jehovah or Yahweh. It cannot start with J. So what is the Yod? How is it pronounced? Next slide please. We magnify that chart. We look for Yod and we look at the far end, the right end. How is it pronounced? It can act as a consonant or also a vowel. A lot of Hebrew names and Hebrew letters can act both as a vowel and a consonant. And it was obvious to the Hebrew people post or pre-exilic times how to pronounce the name of our Almighty God. So the Yad, if it acts as a consonant, it is pronounced with letter Y. If it's a acts as a, a vowel, it is producing the sound E. Right, like jolly, B, right, jolly. But if it is a consonant, it's a Y. In this case, the name of God in most Hebrew names, when it starts with Y, it acts as a what? A consonant. Next slide. No debate there. No big deal there. So we have our first letter, not J, but Y. It is pronounced with a Y, okay? Now, let's go to the next letter. And what is that? That is the Hebrew word, hey. Hey, with the H. Okay, well, how is that pronounced? So let's go back to the guide. We look for hey, and there's the picture of ancient uh, script for hey, and also the Aramaic script uh, for hey, the modern Hebrew. 
Uh, and we find it is pronounced with what? If it's a consonant, it is ha, right? If it is a vowel, it is ah. It's likely a vowel, not a consonant, because we started off with a consonant, with a ya, right? And so there's a Hebrew a grammar that we need to kind of bear in mind. Next slide, please. If a word begins with a yud, why? Then the consonants that follow must have a vowel sound. So the next three words after why should be used not as a consonant, but as a vowel. Take note, however, even when it comes to English grammar, we have rules, but there are always exceptions to the rule. But I believe when it comes to the name of God, God's going to make it easy, not hard, because God wants us to know his name after all. And so there must be a vowel sound after the Y. And so how is that pronounced? Let's go back to the uh, chart. Hey, if it's not H, how does it sound? Ah, yeah, right? So we have Y and an AH to produce the sound yeah next slide yeah so we got the first two letters it produces the sound yeah so we know the name of god contains yeah this is why it cannot be he cannot be jehovah or yehovah or yohovah or you have it it's going to be a yeah the word yeah is the beginning of the name of our all mighty God. But of course, we're not going to rely on Hebrew grammar, right? We have to rely on the biblical words of God to get the pronunciation of the name. So how do we know for sure that the first two letters are pronounced Yah? Well, Yah is actually in the Bible. Did you know that? Let's go ahead and take a look, look at the book of Exodus, chapter 15, 1 to 2. Then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord and spoke, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. Do you find the word Yah there? You don't find it? What do you find there three times? L O R D. What did we find out last week in our lesson? When you find L-O-R-D, all in capital letters, what does it mean? It represents what? The sacred name of God in how many letters? Four letters. The Y, the H, the U, and the H. We're trying to find out how it's pronounced, right? When you look at there, it's included three times. Now, I'm going to read to you right next to this translation. This is the New King James right next to it, a translation that preserves the sacred name, okay? Side by side, so you can see the difference. Next slide, please. So Exodus 15, 1 to 2, we read, it's on the left side. On the right side, another translation that preserves the sacred name. Look at what it says there. It mentions the sacred name, Y-H-U-H, -H, right? Sang this song to Y-H-U-H, -H. you see that? And then I sing to Y-H-U-H, -H. you see that? And then verse 2, look to the left, verse 2 in English. It says, the Lord. But in actuality, it is not Y-H-U-H. -H, it is what? Yah. Yah. Yeah. Well, what is the meaning of Yah? Well, let's go to the next slide. According to the Strong's Hebrew, uh, the, the Strong's, by the way, is a collection of Hebrew words that gives you its definition and how it is used as it's translated in the King James Version, okay? That's the strong. And so when you come across the word Yah, what does it actually mean? If you look at the root word etymology, it is actually a contraction of the sacred name. It's a contraction of Y-H-U-H. In other words, just like words that are contracted, for example, I cannot. What's the contraction of that? I can. And so there's a contraction of the name of our Almighty God. What's the name of that contraction? Yeah. How many times do we find this contraction of Y-H-U-H, which is the name of God, because it says there it means the same as the Y-H-U-H. So how many times do we find this in the Holy Scriptures? Next slide. 
you find it 49 times in 45 verses in the Holy Bible. And so we know for sure, for sure, it's in the Bible. The way you pronounce the first syllable of the name is Yah, not Je, not Ye, but what? Yeah, what's the proof? Not just the Hebrew grammar, not just the Hebrew alphabet. What else? The Bible. The Bible tells us how it is pronounced. Yeah, yeah is how it begins when you pronounce Y-H-U-H. -U -H. So now we're going to go to the third letter, okay? Third letter. Let's go back. By the way, the, the yeah is the first two letters, right? That's how it looks like of the uh, tetragrammaton. And this is where we get the name Hallelujah. Yeah, from next slide, right? You see the underlined red one underlined with red that is the yad and also the he that is the contraction of the name of God. Hallelujah means praise who? Yah, praise Yah. That's what it means. So when you say hallelujah, now you know what you're doing, right? You're praising Yah. And so that's how you pronounce the first two letters of the tetragrammaton. Now let's go to the third letter. What is that letter? Next slide. Oh, yeah. That is the wow. Sometimes it's spelled W-A-W, -W, which is okay. We just need to understand with Hebrew, the W sounds makes it also a sound of wa with a U. Okay? And so it is... The wow, that's what it's called. How is it pronounced? Next slide, please. Let's look at the wow. There it is. And how could it be pronounced? With a W, wa, with a O, or a U. So we have the first two letters, ya, right? So now we have three possibilities, am I right? We can have yao, as in Yahweh. You get that? W. We can have yaho, with the O. Or we can have Yahoo. So we have Yao, ya, uh, Yaho, or Yahoo. Why do I believe it is Yahoo that is being pronounced as who, not O, not W? Again, let's go back to the rule of Hebrew. If a word begins with Yad, then the consonants that follow must have a vowel sound. W is not a vowel sound, right? So it's not the W there. Next slide, please. And so we have two now. Yaho or Yahoo. Why don't I believe it's Yaho? Let's go to the next slide. Vowels in Masoretic Hebrew scripture are a combination of historically long vowels. The He, the Wow, and the Yod. And the Masoretic or Tiberian vowel points. Vowels are long or short in quality and quantity. I want to pause there for a while. You know, before the exile... Before the exile, okay? You know what I'm talking about when I, when I say the exile? Before the people of God were conquered, destroyed, and became exiles in Babylon, there was no, when you read the scriptures, there was no vowel points. Because they knew their, uh, their vowels. They knew how, it was, how to add the vowels. They knew what vowels to add. But after the exile, back in the, in the year 500 AD, right? They began to put dots on their Hebrew. This is why you can tell the difference between Hebrew, that is before the exile, and Hebrew or the Bible after the exile. The one after the exile has dots. Those dots are used to create different variations of the He, the Wow, and the Yod. You see, back then, ancient Hebrew only had three vowels, the He, the Wow, and the Yod, okay? It was only after that they added the other vowel sounds. Vowels are long or short in quality and quantity. He, wow, and yod became known as matres lecciones. What does that mean? Mothers of reading. That's the basis. That's the root, the root vowels. He, wow, and yod. As they assisted in reading scripture. The individual letter used as a vowel was known as a matter. Wow served as a vowel and was pronounced as a long o or u. Okay, so U, whereas the Yod uh, uses a vowel was pronounced as a long E or E, which is I. And the He served as a final long A. So in ancient Hebrew text, there were basically only three vowels, the A, the I, and the U. There was no O 
there was no E. And so when you include E and O, it was not part of the original or the earlier sacred text because the original, next slide please, are only A-I-U. In ancient Hebrew, there were only three vowels, A-I-U. There was no E, there was no O, vowels. And so according to scholars, what do they say about the name of God based on that? Next slide. It says in Jesse News Hebrew Grammar, page 35, section 71, the original vowels, vowels in Hebrew, understood, not written, as in the other Semitic tongues are, like what we said, A, I, U. The vowels E and O always arise from an obscuring or contraction of these three pure sounds. So A, I, U are pure. And E and O are derived from the pure sound. So E and O are impure sounds. Therefore, since the name YHWH is the most ancient of all names, it seems unlikely, right? That it would contain either an E or an O because it wasn't part of the original or the ancient Hebrew vowel. So when we go back to the chart, pronouncing wow, it's not ya with the W, it's not yaho with the O, but what? Yahoo. Yahoo. Next slide, please. So we have the first three letters. Yahoo. So the name of God is pronounced with these first two syllables. Yahoo. Does that sound familiar? You know, there's a website, there's a search engine called Yahoo. You know the founders? Do they know about this name? Yeah. They're making the claim that they are Yahoo. Yeah, it's a boast. As if they know everything. That's why they came up with that search engine. It's a blaspheming of the name of God. Claiming to be who they are not. Yahoo search engine. It comes from Yahoo, the name of God. It is like a nickname of God. You know, like have you have Michael and it's Mike. So we have a contraction, the Yah. Now we have a nickname, a shorthand called Yahoo. The first three letters of God's name is, is pronounced Yah, who? Next slide, please. The first three letters of the Tetragrammaton, the Y, the H, and the U, or Yahoo, are the identifying part of the Tetragrammaton. It means, what does it mean? I am He. That appears in so many of the texts where He identifies Himself. And so when we look at the name of God or pronounce the name of God, it must begin not with Yeho or Jeho, or Yahweh, but Yahoo, Yahoo something else. But Yahoo is considered a short form of the name of God. Do we have evidence that God himself was portrayed by his followers in the three letters of the Tetragrammaton, the Y, the H, and the U? Next slide, please. In May of 1893, during the removal of some debris from the ancient ruins in Nippur, a group of workers made a startling discovery. Buried under the rubble, there were 730 clay tablets written in Aramaic and cuneiform syllabic script. They were part of a file belonging to the Murashu family, inhabitants of Nippur in the fifth century before our era. So it was a long time ago, right? This is from the Babylonian expedition of the University of Pennsylvania. And here's a, here's a, the three tablets that contain the following things. Next slide. Yeah, there it is. It contains the name of Yahoo. And so the ancients referred to God, the Father, as Yahoo, using the first three letters of the Tetragrammaton. Next slide. They even found a coin that has the first three letters. Do you see the first three letters on the coin on the left side? You see it? You see the Yod? And then you, have, you see the He, right? The first three letters are included there. It spells Yahoo. So the ancients referred to God with, sometimes with his nickname, Yahoo. But why are we sure that the way you pronounce the name of God begins with the two syllables Yahoo? Why are we sure? Not Yahweh. 
not Jehovah. Why are we sure it is Yahoo? Let's go to the book of uh, Numbers 6, 23 to 27. We have to be biblical when it comes to our faith, right? Not Hebrew grammar, not Hebrew alphabet, not even the uh, archaeological digs. It has to be biblical, all right? And so let's go to the Bible. Number 6, 23, 27. Speak to Aaron and his son, saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. What is the name there? That's the name, right? The name of Yahoo. The name of God. The Lord, capital L O R D again, makes make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So, what does it say? They shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. So when they were to name their children, they were to put the name of God. And so it should contain the name of God, which we know is begins with Yah. Who? And not only that, the book of Daniel 9, verse 19. O Lord, hear, uh, forgive. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, listen and take action. For your own sake, oh my God, do not delay because, what does it say? Your city and your people are called by your name. So God's people, his children, they're both called by the name of God. In other words, the name of God is contained in their names. Does that make sense? Yeah, this is why, for example, the people of God. When we think of the people of God, who are they? The Lion of Judah, the people of Judah, not Israel, right? Because when Israel split up, it became Israel north, Judah south, who became the remnant. It is Judah. So Judah, the people of God, mentioned by Daniel. Judah, how, does he, how do you spell his name? What is the actual name of Judah? The actual name of Judah is not Judah. It is Yahudah. And so it contains the word Yahu. It means Yahu be praised. And Judah is not the only name that contains Yahu, the name of God. What also are names of God's people, famous names that contain Yahu. Next slide, please. Elijah. You know, if, you, if Elijah would come down from heaven and speak to us, he probably will be upset. Why are you calling me Elijah? That's not my name. What is his real name? Eliyahu. Why would he not want Elijah? Because you're removing the name of God. His real name, his trans, uh, transliterated name is Eliyahu. That's his name, which means Yah is God. My God is Yahu. You know, when we look at Hebrew names, it has meaning, right? This is why when Hebrew people have give names back then during biblical times, when they give names to their kids, people's names were often a description of their character or their destiny, right? And so Elijah, Eliyahu, Yah is God because his strength is going to come from God. Next slide, Jeremiah. His name is not Jeremiah. His real name is what? Hear me, Yahu, you will exalt. Next one, Isaiah. What is his name? Yesha, Yahu. Now, if we're going to be technical here, his actual name is Yasha, Yahu, not Yesha, Yahu. Okay, when you look, when you look at more ancient manuscripts, it's not Yesha, Yahu. It's Yasha. Why? Because there's no e. Right? Yasha, Yahu. Like Elohim is supposed to be Allahim. Okay. Elohim, not Elohim. If you heard of Elohim before, it's God. But this, this, the, when you look at the script, which is older, then it is Elohim, not Elohim. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. Ezekiel. It doesn't have Yahoo, but it has Yah, right? Which means Yah is a strong God. Next one, Obadiah. Abadiah is his real name. It has a name, Yah. Next one. Nehemiah, right? It has a name, Yah. So it contains the name of God. Sometimes a contraction, sometimes a shorthand or nickname of God, okay? So I have Nehemiah. Jehoshaphat, his name is Yahushaphat. You see how it contains the name Yahoo or Yah in their names? 
Next one, Hezekiah has multiple variants in spelling, but they all contain Yahoo or Yah. Yahoo and Yah are both biblical names. This is why we are absolutely sure that the way you pronounce the name of God begins with Yahoo. Next slide, please. And we keep, keep going, we can keep going and going. There are a hundred names in Israel who have Yahoo, I am he, in their names. 72 that end with Yahoo. 27 that begin with Yahoo and one with it in the middle. Examples, Yasha Yahoo, right? Nechem Yahoo, Tobi Yahoo, Mika Yahoo, Zekar Yahoo, Yahoo Yakim, Yahoo Tham, Yahoo Shaphat. Even in the New Testament, the apostles, Matthew, it's actually Mati Yahoo. How about John? It's actually uh, Yahoo Kanon, right? And so that's the name of John because there's no J in Hebrew, okay? So these are the actual way you pronounce the names of the prophets, the people of God. And so you can you begin pronouncing it, next slide, with Ya, the contraction, next slide. When you put the three letters together, you have the Yahoo, right? Which is also the name of God. And so now we go with the last letter. So we're almost there. You can almost pronounce it, right? And so we'll go to the next slide, please. So we have the last letter. What do we have there? A hey. I wonder how you pronounce the hey. Huh? Well, how was it pronounced before? Next slide. Right? There's two letters. How do we pronounce it before? With a ah. So we add an ah. And what do you get? Next slide. Ya, who, ah. Ya, who, Where are we sure? Are we sure that you pronounce the last syllable with an ah? Let's go to the next slide in the preface of the Sefer translation of the Bible. This is what the scholars of Hebrew uh, has to say. The tetragrammaton concludes with a single hey, right? That's the last word. I mean, that's the last letter of the tetragrammaton, the hey, right? Which carries the same jot as the yod. The yod is the first letter. That is the mark ah. Therefore, the pronunciation is ya. Who ah or Yahoo ah? That's how you pronounce the sacred name of God. Next slide. So the first two letters, Yah. The next, the first three letters, Yahoo. The complete name, Yahoo. Wah. You know, you know, there's a simple way by which we can really get the pronunciation of the name of God. All we have to do is look at the name of Judah. How is it pronounced? Judah. Yahuda, right? Let's go to the next slide. Yahuda. What's the difference between Yahuda and Yahua? Just one letter. If you look at the Hebrew script there, it's just one letter, right? It's just one letter, the letter D. That's the only letter that makes Yahuda different from Yahu. How do you pronounce Yahuda? Yahuda. So how do you pronounce Yahua? Yahu, wa, right? Next slide, please. Does it make sense? Because God has given his name to his people. Do you want to know how to pronounce the name of God? Look at the people of God. How are their names pronounced? Because they contain the pronunciation of God's name. It's not Jehovah. It's not Yahweh. Those names are not found. It is Yahu, Yah. To form Yahuwah, which is the name of God. This is why I believe, next slide, it's not Yahweh. Well, why not? Why can it be Yahweh? Number one, because Yahweh only has how many syllables? It only has two syllables. Every Hebrew people, all the Hebrew people who study Hebrew grammar know, if you have a word that has four consonants, it's going to have three syllables, not two syllables. And not only that, if it's only two syllables, it will not capture the meaning. The meaning of the name of God. Because remember, in Hebrew, every name has what? A meaning. And you cannot capture the meaning of the word of God with two syllables, only three <laughs> syllables. Next slide, why not Yahweh? Because it contains a vowel, E. We know that's not a pure vowel. It's a derivative of a few, pure vowel, and so you cannot have Yahweh. Next slide, why else? Why not Yahweh? Because it's not contained in the names of God's people, okay? So those are three reasons why. But there's another reason why. You might get shocked by this. I hope you don't get shocked. Next slide, please. 
in Roman mythology, the idol, Jupiter, I mean, is a god, a false god, we call him an idol, Jupiter, is the same as the idol Zeus in Greek mythology. They just have a different name. So the Romans called him what? Jupiter. The Greeks called him what? Zeus. According to the Latin grammar, J-O-V-E is the ablative case of Jupiter. So he's called uh, Jove. In classical Latin, the pronunciation of Jove, I-O-V-E, because they didn't have J, right? In classic Latin, they did not have J. And so it's I-O-V-E. And how is it pronounced? It's pronounced Yahweh. With the J, I sounding like a Y. Okay, the O being like the sound of Bob. Yeah. So we get the Y, Yah, Yah, with Bob, Bob, Yah. The V sounds like a Wa, a W, and the E sounds like a E. So how was it pronounced? Yahweh. So Yahweh referred to who? Zeus and Jupiter. So why would you call him Yahweh? This is why it cannot be Yahweh. It has to be Yahuwah. Well, how about Jehovah? What, where did that come from? Next slide, please. Jehovah is actually the Germanic rendering of YHWH, known as the Tetragrammaton, or the Hebrew name for God, represented by the letters YHWH with no vowels. In the year 1520, a monk by the name of Pietro Galatino, or Peter Galatinus, that's his American name, should be, you should keep it Pietro Galatino, use the vowels from the word Adonai, a title for God, and put them in between the consonants of YHWH. The German J is a lot like the English Y, and W is more like the V sound. So the resulted, so what resulted was the name? Jehovah. And so Jehovah came from actually the vowels of Adonai and the YHW. H, right? What are the vowels of Adonai? The A, the O, and the I. And so when you think about it, it should be Jehovah, right? Not Jehovah. But do you know why they put they pronounce it with a Jehovah? Because they did not want the name of God to be pronounced. And so the Masoretic, the the uh, the Masorites, they put their pronounce it with the letter E instead of a. Ah. And so Jehovah is the way the name of God is not to be pronounced, <laughs> right? That's kind of ironic, isn't it? That's why Jehovah cannot be the true name of God. Why? Next slide, please. Why not Jehovah? Number one, no J in ancient Hebrew, okay? Number two, what else? It contains the E vowel. What else? Number three, the V sound is supposed to be W, right? Number four, Next slide, and it does, it's not contained in the names of God's people. So Jehovah, Yahweh, they're not the names of God. What is it? Next slide, please. It is Yahuwah. That is how we are to pronounce the name of God. Now, why are we sure that Yahuwah is indeed how you pronounce the name of our almighty God? We have to test that biblically, right? This is why the Bible tells us, in Malachi 3, verse 16, then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. What does the Bible teach us to do about the name? We are to meditate upon the name. What does it mean to meditate upon the name? What does that mean? Huh? It means to think about the name. Does it mean to repeat it again and again and again? No. You see, like we said, like we mentioned to you before, the names in Hebrew, what do they have? What do they have? The names in Hebrew. They have a meaning. If the names of ordinary Hebrew people have a meaning, what do you think? Do you think the name of God also has a meaning? Yes. That's what we need to meditate on. And when we meditate on that name, that sacred name of God, we're going to find very wonderful things, and we will know his character. As a matter of fact, this is what uh, the Bible says in Exodus 3, 13 to 15. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I 
am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, capital L, what does that mean? Yahuwah, right? Say to the Israelites, Yahuwah, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever. The name by which I am to be remembered from generation to generation. So his name, Yahuwah, after it was given to Moses, he said, this is my name forever. What does that mean? We need to pass it from one generation to the next. He is to be remembered by that name. The name, Yahuwah. Wait a minute. Because there are some who say the name of God is I am who I am. Right? No. I am who I am is the meaning of the name. Remember, Moses asked, what, is his, what if they were to ask me, what is his name? What should I tell them? Before God giving him the name, he first gave him what it means. That's why he said, I am who I am. That's the meaning of his name. After saying, I am who I am, what did he say is the actual name that is to be remembered forever? The one used almost 7,000 times. What is that? Yahuwah. This is my name forever. Well, how will we know if Yahuwah is the right translation or the transliteration of his actual name? How will we know if it's the right pronunciation? It has to match the meaning that God gave. Because if there's a mismatch in the meaning that God gave, I am who I am, and the meaning of Yahuwah, then that's probably not how you pronounce the name of God. You agree? There, can be, there cannot be a contradiction, especially in the name of God. So let's meditate now on the name of God. Let's look first at I am who I am. Next slide. What is the meaning of God's name? It means I am who I am. Well, that's the way the English try to capture the Hebrew, right? But in actuality, I mean, it's deeper than that. Because what does I am who I am mean? Let's go to the next slide. We can look at the Hebrew text. The one outlined in yellow is I am who I am, right? You see that? You see how the first letter, the first word and the last word are the same? Why? Because it's ahaya, ashar, ahaya. That, what does that mean? I am who I am, or some say it's I am that exists. Both are correct, okay? So let's go to the next slide. You see it? And so that refers to the first letter, the first word there, ahaya. The middle letter, the middle word is ashar and ahaya. So the meaning of I am who I am in Hebrew, next slide, is ahaya, ashar, ahaya. Okay, so what do those words mean? What does ahaya mean? What does ashar mean? Well, it's a good thing we have a Hebrew book that contains words and its meaning. And so, go to the next slide. What is the meaning of ahaya? It comes from the word haya, which is the Hebrew word 1961. They put numbers in their words. So it's convenient for us not to, so that we will not confuse which word is being used. Okay, so it is used, it's 1961, it's haya. What does it mean? To exist, become, come to pass, exist, happen, be in existence, to abide. That's what haya means, which is ahaya. Okay, what's the other word that we need to know? So that we can put together, construct a meaning of the name. Ashar. Okay, what does ashar mean? Next slide. The Strong's word, the Hebrew word, number 834, is ashar, which means what? Who. Who. This is why the translation was I am who I am, right? Ashar, I mean ahaya, ashar, ahaya. But well, look at the meaning of the word ahaya. It's replete with deep meaning, to become, come to pass, to exist, to be in existence. And so when you look at the word haya, it tells you it's about his existence. He existed before, he exists now, and he exists in the future. Next slide. And so the name ahaya, ashar ahaya, actually simply means I am he. The I am he comes from the yahoo right? I am he who is the asher. I am he who is, who was, and who is to come. That's the meaning of I am who I am. Well, this meaning of the name of God, the apostle John knew. 
This is why when it comes to, when he mentioned God who created all things, what did he say? Let's go to Revelation chapter 1, verse 4. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him, from God, who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. That's the meaning of Ahaya, Ashar, Ahaya, I am who I am. The one who is, who was, and who is to come. Well, what does that actually mean? Psalms 91 to 2. Yahuwah, okay? That's how we would learn. Yahuwah, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. That's the meaning of Ahaya, Ashar Ahaya. He is from everlasting to everlasting. He had no beginning and he has no end. He is God who is from everlasting to everlasting. No beginning, no end is the immortal God. And so when we look at Ahaya, next slide please. The meaning of Ahaya, Ashar Ahaya, is I am he who is, who was, and who is to come. Now, we can test the name uh, Yahuwah. What does Yahuwah mean? It has to match this. You agree? It has to. It has to match Ahaya, Ashar, Ahaya. And so what does Yahuwah, next slide, what does it mean in Hebrew? Well, we can break down Yahuwah into three parts. Next slide. This is why I told you the name of God has to have three parts. Because the, the meaning has what? Three parts. To convey the meaning, it needs to have three parts, three syllables. The ya, the hu, and the ah. Okay? And so what are the Hebrew equivalents of those parts? Next slide. The haya, the hu, and the hawa, or the huwa. Okay? It's transliterated huwa. Haya, hu, huwa. Those are the three parts of the name yahu, wa. Okay? So what do they mean? Next slide, please. We already know what haya means, right? To exist, to become, come to pass, exist, happen, right? But what does who mean? H-U. Any idea? Remember asher? What does asher mean again? Asher means who. I wonder what who means. Who. Let's go to Strong's 1931. Who. What does it mean? Oh, oh my gosh. It's the same, it's the same meaning. Who, he, who, him, same, such, that, this, we're in, which, who. The same meaning as Asher. So far, so good, right? Well, how about Hawa? What does that mean? Hawa or Hua, what does that mean? Well, it's actually two strong words, 1933, 1935. Hawa, what does it mean? To exist, to be or become, come to pass, that which is, who, to uh, to breathe, especially in connection with other words. Same as Haya. So what do we see here? Next slide. The meaning of Yahuwah is the same. I am he who is, who was, and who is to come. Next slide. So we have Ahaya and Yah. It's not Yahusha. It's Yahuwah. Okay. They're the same. Ahaya, Ashar, Ahaya. It means the same thing as Yahuwah. The only difference is wa, haya, and hawa are used differently, right? In uh, the first one, the meaning ahaya, asher, ahaya, it's used haya, but in the actual name, it's hawa or huwa, right? But they're essentially interchangeable. But there's a minor difference that I noticed. I don't know if you notice it too. There's a little slight variation. There's something added to Hawa that's not in Haya. You want to see it? I want to let you see it and see if you can find it. There's a something added to Hua or Hawa that's not in Haya. What is it? It's essentially the same meaning, but there's something in Hua that's not in uh, yeah, I mean, if they're so closely related. This is why it says uh, compared to Strong's Hebrew 1961, right? They're comparable. But there's something in Hawa, in, in Hua, the not in Haya. You see it? What is it? What is it? 
Next slide, please. Next slide, did you find it? Yeah, did we go to the next slide already? Yeah, what do you see now? What's the difference? What is in Hawa that's not in Haya? To, to breathe. And so let's meditate on that. Do you remember God breathing? Yeah. When God breathes, does it have an effect? Yeah. So what could that possibly mean? Well, when we look at the name Yahuwah, remember, we are to meditate on the name of Yahuwah. We can also break it up into two parts, Yahu and Hawa. Yahu means what? Yahuwah. Hawa. Next slide, please. Means, what is it again? To exist, to breathe. And so Yahu, Yahu, Yahu breathes to bring to existence all things. Next slide, please. And so when we look at that, Yahu is he who causes all things to exist with his breath. That's why when he said, let there be light, all things were created. Not only that, Yahuwah adds ah, what does that mean? Next slide. Remember Adam? And God created Adam from, from, from uh, the dust of the ground. He was just uh, clay. He was just a body. When did he become a living soul? When God breathed on him. And so he became Adama. The ah was that God breathed and he was a living soul. Next slide. Maybe Abram. His name was Abram. Sarai. But they, beca they became Abram. Sarah. Right? God breathed to them the ah. The ah. The wow. And so he was causing something to existence. This, in this case, he was causing the covenant to exist. He was creating the covenant. And so when you look at the Hawa, it gives you the meaning of causing something to exist. This is why Hawa, not just Haya, was used. So when we look at the big definition, the overall definition of Yahuwah, it even exceeds I am who I am. Next slide. What, is, what could it mean? It says right here, I am who he is, who was, who is to come, and what does it say? Who is the source or the cause of all that exists. Does that make sense? Is it biblical? Let's go back to the Apostle John. Revelation 1.8. What does Apostle John say about God? He says, I am the Alpha and what does Alpha and Omega mean? The beginning and the end. In other words, the totality of reality, right? This is what we can find in Genesis 1.1, the Alpha and Omega. In Genesis 1.1, God created all things. He is the source of Alpha and Omega, all things. And so God is mentioning that he is the source of all things. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God. And who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. And so God himself is the one speaking here. And he says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the one who causes all things to exist. And I am the one who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. And what is a short way of saying all that? A short way of saying all that meaning. Huh? Next slide, please. Yahuwah. <laughs> Yahuwah. This is why when you meditate on the name of God, you will find meaning. It will tell you who he is. He is the one who is from everlasting to everlasting and who has caused all things to exist. He himself was not caused to exist. He is from everlasting to everlasting. But he's the one who causes all to exist. That is Yahuwah, our God. What is our responsibility? Why does God want us to know his name? We're almost done. Next slide, please. The name Yahuwah. Look at all these things. Because when you look through the Holy Scriptures, there's so much about the name of God. The Bible says we need to acknowledge the name of God. 1 Kings 8, 33, 35. We need to bless the name of God. Psalms 145, 21. We need to call on the name of God. Psalms 99, 6. We need to confess the name of God. 2 Chronicles 6, 24, 25. We need to declare the name of God. Romans 9, 17. 
We need to, we must not despise the name of God, Malachi 1.6. We need to exalt the name of God, Psalms 34.3. We need to give thanks to the name, Psalms 106.47. We need to glorify the name, 1 Chronicles 16, 9 and 10. We need to honor the name, Psalms 66, 2 and 4. Love the name, Psalms 5.11. Magnify the name, Psalms 69.30. Make known the name, 2 Chronicles 2. Mention the name, Isaiah 12.2. Praise the name, 2 Samuel 22.50. Publish the name. Deuteronomy 3.23, remember the name, Exodus 3.15, sacrifice offering to the name, Psalms 116.13, sing to the name, Psalms 9.1 9, 9, and 2, think on the name or meditate on the name, Malachi 3.16, trust in the name, Isaiah 50 verse 10. What say you? Do you think it's important to know? What do you think? I think so. I think so. We must do all this concerning the name of God. What is that name? It is the name of Yahuwah. But brother, that was just for the Old Testament. But during the New Testament, did Jesus proclaim the name? Let's find out. Hebrews chapter 2, 11 down to 12. So now Jesus and the ones he makes holy have the same father. That's referring to us. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. For he said to God, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. I will praise you among your assembled people. During the Christian era, are we supposed to know the name of God? What did, what did the Lord Jesus Christ say to God? He said to God, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. Who are the brothers and sisters of the Lord Jesus Christ, the ones he made holy. How? By means of his blood. Who are they? Those who were assembled together in his body. That's us. That's us. What did the Lord Jesus Christ say to his father? I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. And we need to proclaim that name to each other. This is why, brethren, do not be surprised if I will be calling on the name of Yahuwah. Does it mean it's wrong to use Father? Absolutely not. We use Abba. Why? Because Christ said, call your, your uh, Father Abba. Call your God Abba. In prayer, we begin with Father. And, you know, and when, you name, when you use the name of God, Yahuwah, you know, follow it up with something that reverences Him. Yahuwah Elohim. Yahuwah Almighty. Yahuwah Abba. Right? This is why we need to begin to introduce the sacred name of God because He wants us not only to know it, but to proclaim it, proclaim it, make it known, worship it, use it to praise the Lord God. This is why we have this Bible study today, right? And so before we go ahead and wrap up, I just want to ask you the following questions. Is that okay? Actually, it's not me asking you the following questions. It's the Bible asking you the following questions. Here it is, list of questions. Proverbs 34, verse part A. Who has ascended into heaven and descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who has wrapped the waters in his garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? See those four questions? Do we know the answer to those four, to those four questions? Who is that? That's God. And that's God. But there's another part to that question that I'm going to read next. Let's continue reading Psalms 30 verse 4. What is his name? Or his son's name? Surely you know. So we're supposed to know the name of who? God. And we're supposed to also know the name of his we know the name of God, Yahuwah. Do you know the name of the Son? Why do we need to know the name of the Son? Well, let's find out. Philippians 2, 8 to 9, Romans 9. Being found in appearance as a man, Jesus Christ, he humbled himself by, by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. For this reason also, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Do we need to know the name of the son? Yeah. Why? Because God, Yahuwah, our father, bestowed upon his son the name that is above every name 
And how important is this name bestowed upon his son? The last passage of our study today, the book of Acts 4 and the verses 12, and there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. We know the name of the Father. Praises be to our loving Yahuwah. That he has made known to us by various means and various instruments. What his name is and what it means. He is the eternal one. Who was not caused to exist because he is from everlasting to everlasting. And who causes all things to exist. That is Yahuwah, our Father. Our almighty God. But he also gave a name to his son that we must know because that is the name by which we must be saved. And so brothers and sisters, we're going to study that name next week. Okay? We're going to find out the name of the Son. You might be surprised and your world might be rocked. I'm telling you that in advance. Okay, so prepare yourself. I know it's a lot to take in. But brethren, prophecy is being fulfilled right now. And we need to be thankful to our loving Abba. Because this is happening in our time. Okay? So hopefully you will attend our Bible History Project next week. Before we go ahead and conclude, let us all stand for our prayer. Our loving Yahuwah. Yes. Abba Father. Thank you so much yes. for revealing your name. Yes. Thank you by grace we have received something that we should have known long ago. Yes. But you had a purpose, you had a plan. Yes. And Father, your plan is being fulfilled. Yes. Thank you so much for giving us this knowledge. Knowledge contained in your holy book. Help us to believe, to have faith, yes. and to spread your fame. That your name will be proclaimed to all the earth yes. as you willed long ago and as you will to this very day. Father, we will worship your name. Yes. We will worship you. Yes. Thank you so much for considering us worthy yes. to know your name, which means only one thing. You want to relate to us yes. at a much deeper level. Praises be to you. Loving Abba, you are so good and kind. Thank you, Father, for all things. We promise you we will follow you. We will never profane your name. We will show reverence for your name. And we will represent you to all as expected by means of righteousness, truth, and holiness. Father, bless us when we need you, when we are persecuted and ridiculed. Teach us to look up to you. Yes. To trust you in all things. Yes. Praises be unto you. Amen. Our Lord and loving Messiah. Yes. Pray for your servants. Yes. Help yes. us to understand also your name. Yes. Thank you for revealing the name of our Father to us. Yes. This is the work that you have done. Yes. Because you are the shepherd. We are your sheep. Yes. And as you have promised the Father, you will indeed proclaim his name to all Amen. of us. Father, thank you for listening to your people. Yes. Please forgive all our sins yes. and keep us safe at all times. Yes. We ask all things in the name of your beloved Son, our Mashiach. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay, brothers and sisters, just one announcement. Uh, December 31st, uh, the eve of the new year, we will have a prayer at 8 o'clock uh, p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is 11 o'clock. Eastern time. Okay, that is our year end prayer. And we will show you on the Facebook page the ID, the Zoom ID that you can use to join us in our prayer. Can, is that possible to do Facebook Live? Yeah, because we might not have enough uh, people, we might not have enough uh, room for those who join. Okay, all right, that is all. And may God bless all of us.